Welcome to my RV Mods Part 3, The First Trip. So now we've reached our first trip. The trailer is not only livable, but a friend actually offered me four times what I put into it at this point. No way. This is now a family trailer and a labor of love with all the amount of work I put into it. We decided to buy a brand new car to pull the trailer. My work cargo van can certainly pull it, but while the wife and I will be comfortable in the soundproof cab up front, sticking the kids in the back of a windowless cargo van for an eight hour trip is highly frowned upon. My wife traded in her Sienna for a GMC Acadia. Why, you asked? Well, two reasons. One, the Acadia with the tow package pulls 5,200 pounds and the RV weighs 3,000 pounds. Now, if you believe either of those two statements, I have some advice to you. First and foremost, when you read online that GMC puts heavy-duty radiators in all their Acadias, don't believe it. And secondly, and most importantly, when a Mr. Haney-like Carney, as described in the first video, tells you that a 28-foot trailer with a slide-out weighs no more than 3,000 pounds, take my advice and weigh it for yourself. We made the trip uh, in 11 hours by pulling a 7,000-pound RV with the car meant to pull a maximum of 2,000 pounds. It was a bit taxing on the engine, I must say, but we ran with the AC off and made it comfortably. I don't need to tell you, now I pull the RV, and now the rest of the family just meets me there. So we arrive at Fort Clinch, located on the northeastern tip of Florida. Now the girls enjoyed the camping, the biking, the fort, and my wife and I were extremely relieved. It would be tough going through all this effort and planning our vacations around the RV only to have the kids hate every trip. Luckily for us, they had a blast. One night as we were sitting around the fire, my camp sight neighbor alerts me that she sees water pouring out of my camper. I run over and shut off the water. Okay, did I mention that this was a carny trailer at one point in its life? Now the fresh water tank, the pump, and the hot water heater is located under the lower bunk, so I lifted up the bed to gain access to the plumbing. What I saw next caused me to laugh and cry at the same time. One of the prior carny owners bypassed the fresh water pump and he capped it off. Now, let me elaborate. If you have a PVC plastic tube producing water at high pressure, you can glue a PVC plastic cap to it to seal it. If you know anything about plumbing, you know you should never mix PVC and CPVC. So if you have a CPVC tube, you should cap it with a CPVC cap and CPVC glue. However, there are some solvents that can glue together, but it's not recommended. One more little item of fact. Most RV water lines are made with PEX tubing. No glue will adhere to it because it is too flexible. You must either crimp it with a crimp ring or a quick connector or a compression connector made for PEX. Now that you know a little bit of plumbing tips, you can understand why I cried and laughed simultaneously when I saw a PVC cap glued onto a PEX water line with silicon caulking. <sighs> a quick trip to the hardware store in the morning, and the RV was high and dry. Luckily, the water was contained and no damage was done. The rest of the trip was uneventful, yet relaxing and enjoyable. You'll enjoy the next episode entitled... The Anniversary Surprise and Other RV Mods.